So I'm going to talk today about, um, given we've just heard about this awesome Pending Services API and the, the opportunity to kind of make it easier for, for folks to integrate into other applications, we can talk about um, where there's huge opportunities for that, how that makes the user experience and, and adoption flow for people using IPFS more seamless, um, and specifically within some of the IPFS tools that um, the team's created to um, kind of help help people onboard onto IPFS and use IPFS um, kind of in their day-to-day -day life cycle. Uh, we'll talk about how we will make use of these new pinning APIs as they solidify. Cool, so generalized pinning API unlocks a whole ton of new opportunities um, for all sorts of application developers in the IPFS ecosystem. Um, a number of folks have already, already seen this pain point and started just hand rolling this directly. Um, so you see the, the recent integration with ENS where you can upload files directly to IPFS. Uh, I think they integrated with Temporal to you know, easily do that handshake. Um, Unstoppable Domains has also done a, a direct upload to IPFS through um, their website portal. And a number of other groups are, are doing this kind of more manually. Um, and that, that process is like right now uh, very one-off and rather fragmented. Um, when you think about all of the other tools that exist in the IPFS ecosystem, crypto wallets, um, marketplaces, tools for um, kind of content distribution, um, where you have creators in charge of the data they're uploading, um, you can imagine a lot of these wanting to make use of longer term persistence that isn't just on their local node um, where they're uploading from. Um, so in the, in the case where you have uh, NFTs or other crypto assets, you as, a, as an owner of these um, digital items want to make sure that they are persisted long term. Um, as you can imagine, much closer integrations with, with NFT wallets, like some of the stuff that um, Kyle was talking about in the Pinata talk about uh, making sure that your digital Mona Lisa doesn't disappear and that you can ensure for the long haul that, uh, that that's going to stick around. Um, there's the work um, kind of from a, an identity document perspective, the stuff that Joel was talking about for Threebox and uh, Ceramic and, and other kind of identity-based blockchain documents where you want to be persisting your different um, kind of domains and, and other content, making sure that that data uh, referenced in blockchains continues to stick around uh, and making it really easy for you to, to persist this content. There's also things like, um, like with query, where right now you host a lot of awesome, maybe very large data sets that you're working with other scientists or um, people who are analyzing and manipulating these, these version data sets. Um, but maybe you also would like to have that data persisted um, when you go offline or um, pay for additional folks to follow along and persist the newer versions and iterations of the work that um, you and other others are doing collaboratively through tools like Query. Um, video is another big one. Right now there's already a, a number of tools for things like Viewly and DTube and other video platforms that allow you to upload and persist videos um, on, on those chains. Um, I can imagine this, there's more opportunity to, to do this a lot more um, and integrate it more seamlessly into the places where, where people are uploading video. Um, Audius is another example where you can upload tracks to Audius, um, but right now, like making sure that your audio track sticks around is something that kind of is still a, a local IPFS node or kind of gateway um, service sort of sort of activity. So again, making making these things available in situ of an application or user flow, so you don't have to hop sideways. Um, Fleek's another example. I think they, they handle this kind of for you. They pin the content to, um, to IPFS, um, but you could imagine um, kind of making that so that you as a user who is uploading a website can more seamlessly pay for long-term persistence for, for your site's hosting. Um, Another example is Open Bazaar and Haven. So this is where you're having marketplaces or stores. Um, and again, right now you host your own IPFS node, you run it yourself um, for your store. Um, definitely an opportunity to, to kind of bake that in more seamlessly um, and give you opportunities for, for services you want to use instead. So we just talked about all of the different opportunities here from kind of an, an ecosystem perspective, places where folks might want to um, make use of pinning APIs in order to simplify the upload and persistence flow. 
Uh, let's talk a little bit about some specific tools that, that we created just for, for people in the IPFS ecosystem um, who are onboarding, um, where we were running into right now some, some challenges or kind of frustrating user flows that we think we can simplify having a more um, kind of uh, simplified and consistent API for pending services. Um, okay, so talking specifically about the web UI, which is also the thing that most people think of um, from a desktop perspective, um, how, how people interact with their own locally running IPFS node um, and see all of the files that they've pinned. Um, so this is just a quote from the IPFS desktop GitHub. Um, the, the aim here is just to enable you to interact with and, and use your local IPFS node um, really efficiently, but it also enables a number of, of kind of basic IPFS actions, things like adding data to IPFS, downloading hashes you see around the internet, um, helping pin and persist that data, um, auto-adding screenshots, um, a lot of the user flows that emerge out of those capabilities um, also want things like longer-term persistence outside of your own single local IPFS node. Uh, so great, how could we bring some of that tooling and capabilities to IPFS desktop and web UI? So uh, I'm gonna walk you through a common use case that I have um, since I spent a lot of my time working with an IPFS blog. I'm sure Jen can also uh, sympathize with this from the IPFS newsletter perspective. Um, but a common aim here is thinking about how do I bring assets that I want to include or reference in a blog post. And I also want these assets to be hosted on IPFS. Um, Images, you can imagine, you know, great blogs can handle images, but what about video? Um, there's a lot of other types of, of assets you might want to include and reference, and you want them all to be distributed over IPFS. And right now, this isn't actually a super seamless experience for um, a normal blog creator. Um, so right now, uh, if I'm creating my blog on IPFS and uploading it, um, I might have videos or images that I, that I need to include. Um, but when I'm actually going and doing the writing and inserting these, these assets, um, my experience isn't super seamless. Um, either I need to use my um, local IPFS desktop to upload a file to IPFS, um, but then I have the downside that if my computer ever goes offline, um, my, my local laptop, uh, then hold on, our blog is no longer able to load that video or load that image. That's not what I want. Um, so I have to go to something like Pinata, another service, and either take that hash that I've already uploaded off my local machine um, so that it can be pinned to other more resilient services, or I have to upload that file directly through Pinata. And that's kind of like another external hop from the thing that I'm, I'm kind of running locally already. And that's, yeah, it's not a great super simplified user experience and flow to hop between multiple different places. Um, and it's super similar to the, the kind of frustration you'd experience across a lot of these other sites, like Viuli or Audius or DTube or Query, where again, you don't wanna upload data from your local node to one of these services and then also have to, to hop to a different UI um, in order to make sure that data is persisted, copying over hashes or re-uploading files you've already connected. So in, um, instead of that, how do we bring the toolings directly into the application? Um, having a similar pinning API enables us to actually integrate this work directly into the products we're creating. Um, so the, the mocks we have for this um, and, and our tentative plan going forward is to actually add a space within the web UI specifically for configuring persistence options. So we add a, a new um, icon over here on the left. And this gives you the default, which is great. You can store things locally on your local IPFS node and get a little bit of data about you know, how much data you're storing, how much bandwidth it's using. Um, but you can also add other services. And anyone can come and PR support for persistent services into the web UI so that you can select one of, a, um, one of the pinning service providers who implement this pinning service API. Um, in, and you can then select one of these um, and configure it for your local IPFS node. Um, so if say I selected Infura, um, I can label it. If maybe I have multiple Infura accounts, a work account and a personal account, um, I can use my secret API key so I don't have to worry about like uh, additional sign-in or any worries about like configuring, um, you know, worried about syncing data between two different portals. Um, and I can 
decide how, how much of the content within my node I want to auto upload, um, either all my content or just the things that I've pinned or other things like that. Um, and then I can configure lots of these. And so I have uh, the different pinning APIs that I support. Maybe I want to have multiple so I can do uh, replication across many different service provider sites. Um, and it's really easy for me to configure this, um, hop over and configure my settings um, within one of these pinning services directly, um, and then change and configure them. Um, and this means that, great, now all of my data that I add to my local IPFS desktop um, or my local IPFS node through web UI um, can just get automatically persisted to, to the, the cloud, the interwebs, to others who are helping make sure that when my node goes offline, all this data sticks around. Um, and so that's, that's the future, integrating these sorts of persistence capabilities directly into the tools that people use makes them more useful, more intuitive, and then also helps, helps clarify to people like, hey, I need to be thinking about where my data stays for the long term. And for all of the people who offer pinning services and, um, and kind of persistent opportunities, um, this creates uh, adoption funnels and, and a direct connection with people who want to make use of those sorts of services. Um, and so excited to see other, other groups make use of this and having something like a very uh, generalized pinning API so you can very easily mix and match and it's not a one-off manual integration for every pinning service we want to add makes this really easy uh, for, for many groups to use. Um, so we're excited to do this specifically within IPFS web UI and desktop but I'm very confident that many other groups are going to be very excited about this as well and about integrating this sort of support directly into their applications. Um, you can see that groups like um, ENS and Unstoppable Domains have already done it. I expect many others to follow um, to make something really easy. Cool. So very excited. This is, you know, a new, a new effort that we're pushing forward. Excited to work with everyone here to actually help make that happen and make it a reality. Um, and happy to also talk with folks about ways that we can do it together.